welcome to livealittlehigher.com. Next Sunday night, the 25th of Kislev, we will be celebrating the hol holiday of uh, Hanukkah. And we know that this month of Kislev really is known for this very special uh, celebration of the month of, of, the, of the holiday of light, which is the transformation of darkness into light. This is the representation of this, uh, of this holiday. So the name Kislev derives from the Hebrew word kessel, which means security, trust, and also the month of Kislev is known for the Hasidic Yom Tov of the 19th and 20th of Kislev, Yutet Kislev, in which the Alter Rebbe Shnir Salman of Yadi in 1798 was released from prison and he was able to bring out all his knowledge to the world. So it is a very important month. It's a month of a, a lot of light, of a lot of transformation, of a lot of miracles. And so we see that this word kessel, which means security or, or trust, which is a bitahon actually, is the foundation of the month. So the miracle of Hanukkah reflects the active trust of the Hasmoneans in God that drove them to stand up and fight the few against the many uh, against the Hellenistic Seleucid Kingdom and they won. So the Rebbe Lubavitch, he says that the miracle really was that when the Jewish people came into the Beit HaMikdash, when they came into the Beit HaMikdash, into the Holy Temple, which had been completely desecrated, it was violated, it was abused. Uh, the miracle was that the Jews looked for that curse of oil that was still pure. And this is a miracle. And so we see that, um, that in reality, uh, this represents, this curse of oil, represents that inner light that we all have within ourselves. It's really that spark of God that we have within us that no matter what, can, what happens in our lives, no matter what happens if we're abused or if we're, um, we are uh, mistreated or we did something in our lives that is not a right thing to do, no matter what, if we connect to the purity of our neshama, we can always transcend and we can always transform. And, and we can always, um, we can always bring out that innocence that we have no matter what. And this is the way in which a person can really, can really um, get rid of trauma, is when they connect to that inner holiness within them. And that's what gives them the, the, the courage, the, the, the strength to be able to jump whatever happened in their lives and continue life in a purposeful, meaningful way, bringing light to the world. So from Svi Freeman, I got this article which is called Who Needs Darkness? It's an incredible piece that he wrote. Um, and uh, Hanukkah, we're always focused on the light. But really, to be, ha to be able to have light, you need a backdrop of darkness. Uh, if you're in the light, you can never see the light. So it is because of the darkness that we're able to see the light. And so the question is that darkness seems to be a default position, the regular state of things, and why does our Creator plunk us down to despair, misery, and sorrow, and then ask us to struggle upwards towards the light? Why not, out of love for His creations, just make everything beautiful and light. Why do we have to come to this world to experience darkness, to experience pain, to experience suffering? What's the whole perspective of this? What's the whole point? So we see that if Hashem would have put us in this world in a beach with a piña colada every day of our life, we would completely dry out. There, there's no way that we could ever shine uh, our light. The ultimate good is when you go out and sweat and achieve it for yourself. This is the ultimate good. And so Hashem is all goodness. Nothing from Him is bad. Nothing can, bad can come from Hashem. And we sometimes think that the darkness of the world is something that is external from God. But in reality, Hasidut, which comes from the teachings of the Alter Rebbe, teaches us that this darkness really 
is not something separate from God, it's actually part of Hashem too. It's a different expression of God in the world. And the darkness is there so we can reveal the light. That's the whole purpose. And we're in this world to be revelation, to bring revelation to Hashem, of Hashem to the world. So, so we answer that there is a reason God gave us this nature out of his ultimate goodness. He wanted to provide us the highest, most ultimate good. What's the highest state there is to be the creator? So the highest thing he could grant us is to be partners in creation. So we cannot be Hashem because we're not God. We're just a, a representation of God in this world. We're, we're here to represent him and to bring his light to the world. We have a godly neshama, a godly spark of God within us. And the point is that Hashem gives us this whole life, this whole experience in order for us to be able to transform darkness into light so we can be um, co-creators with Hashem in this world. And this is the ultimate goodness uh, that there exists because there's nothing more, um, more well felt for a human being than to feel that he has achieved. And so you see that darkness is only darkness in a superficial sense. To God, even darkness does not darken, and nighttime shines like day. So for Hashem, there's in His realm, there's no such thing as darkness. Everything is light. And light is revelation, and dark is concealment. And we know that this is a world of concealment and revelation. This is what it is. I don't know, for you, those who don't know, there's something called a Shabbat lamp. And this Shabbat lamp is special for Shabbat. And how it works is it's a lamp that it has a bulb. And it's always, uh, you turn it on and it's always on on Shabbat, but it has a cover. So depending the amount of light you want in your room, you put that cover, it has different ways to adjust it. And you can get a little light or a little more of light or more light, which exposes the whole bulb. This is the way that Hashem more or less uh, reveals himself through us. So everything is concealed, but you're, but he's, he's completely bright. He's not, he's not really not existent. He is like that bulb. The thing is that the world has these layers of concealment that conceal God. It's like, like that lamp. But the Jew, when he learns Torah or when he does a mitzvah, when he acts, in a, in a mensch-like way, he, he brings a Kiddush Hashem he, he, of, of, of God in the world, then what he's doing is that he is, he's taking away these layers and he's being able to allow that light to be revealed. So we see, for example, that there's things in life that are not completely exposed, like for example, a person writes a poem and you read the poem and, and it's very beautiful, but you really need someone to explain to you the whole uh, idea behind that poem. Or you, you, for example, I'm an artist and I paint and my paintings are a reflection of ideas that I have, but a person that stands and looks at the painting has no idea what really is going on within me when I painted that painting. So they asked me to explain it and there's a way that they see it and there, then there's the revelation of why that painting was done in such a way. So we see that there's something very, very important here that is taught to us that brings a lot of depth into, into why we have dar darkness. And in reality, is that darkness, darkness, in the darkness, we can really uh, get to know Hashem. And in the darkness, we can really, really get to see things that we would never be able to perceive or experience if it wasn't for that darkness. So darkness talks, talks to us. Whenever you're in a dark place in your life, think about it. What is this darkness teaching me? And when you see people that struggle in life, that they have gone through hardships and struggles, once they have overcome the struggles and you go and you talk to them, there are people that have so much knowledge and wisdom and they have so much understanding 
of, of things in life that they would have never, ever, ever have that knowledge and experience if it wasn't for the struggle. So the struggles each of us endures with, with the darkness of our world parallel the challenges of the students and their, or the person that is looking at the, at the painting. And uh, the darkness is the information it's a very deep in, in information that once you are able to, um, to take off the layer of that darkness and reveal the light, then you're able to understand things that you would, would never, ever, ever be able to understand if it's not for that. So ultimately, God understood the omnip God, God is understood to be omnipotent. Uh, obviously, he's also capable of revealing the hidden without struggle. He could do a world where we could just understand without having to suffer. But obviously as well, he can give us the ultimate good without the darkness. And so that is because Hashem wants the struggle. Hashem wants us to work for it. Hashem wants us to not have bread of shame, which is a Kabbalistic concept that when things are given, are given to you for free, then you never have that sense of achievement. You will never have that sense that I was able to, to come out of this. I was able to achieve something in my life. So the answer goes back to the classic statement of one of the Jewish philosophers, Rabbi Yosef of Castile, who was asked the question, why did God make the world when he did it? Why? And he answered to, in a way, in which he said, at the beginning of all things, there is no reason, Hashem created, there is no reason. For if the world, for if there would be a reason to the beginning, it would no longer be the beginning. And so the reason would be the beginning. And then you would ask me, what is the reason for that reason? Yet another beginning. So yes, we know that Hashem desired the world, and because he desired, he created this world, this lower realm, but why did he desire? <laughs> How are we going to go to that question? Why did he desire? And if you find the answer to that question, then you have another question. So there's always another beginning. And um, in honor of the Alter Rebbe, Rabbi Schneer Salman of Liadi, he said it in different words. He said, he cited the Midrash that God created a world because he desired a dwelling in a mundane world. Why? Because he so desired. Not because anything was lacking, because for Hashem there's no such thing as lacking or full. Uh, he desired because he decided to desire. And when dealing with the raw desire, there are no questions. So this reminds me of a psychologist when we were, uh, when I had my kids and they were young, I remember that uh, she, she gave us these classes on how to bring up kids. And there's a certain age where the kid is always asking why. I think it's when they're two years old. They're always why. You tell them something and say why, and you give them the answer and they say why. So we ask her, how do you answer that? And she says, just say because I say so. And that's it. And that's the way it works. So here the Alter Rebbe is saying the same thing. He desired because he desired. That, 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 who knows why he desired? He desired because he desires. There's no questions. So the, what does he desire? That a place of darkness, and that we know, what did he desire? Not why he desired, but what did he desire? And that is that a place of darkness be transformed into light. The creator states in it as the outset, let there be light. Better translated as it should become light. He chose that and, uh, chose that and he invested, so to speak, in his entire being in the goal, no, not only the entire cosmic structure is designed around the objective, but as a, every step along the way, wherever you find that purpose unfolding, you will find him in all his essence, and wrapped within the veils of darkness, sitting within the supernal hiddenness, in the shade of the Almighty he dwells. So, so we see that, um, that, uh, that actually, this is Hashem's desire for the world. This is what he wanted. Uh, he wants a place where we come and where we transform it, where we are the light. We are the light. The, the world is dark and we are the light. He wants us to bring our light to the world. To finish off, I heard a beautiful story, which I've heard many times, but it's worth 
repeating it because this really encapsulates the, the idea of being a light in the world. And um, on December 11, 1995, uh, Mr. Aaron Feuerstein, he it was his birthday. He was, he was, um, he was his birthday, 70 year old birthday. And he had a very big factory with 3,000 employees. And that day, the day of his birthday, this factory called Molten Mills, uh, which was built in the 1900s, in the early 1900s by his father, burnt, burnt down. Imagine what darkness, a person his whole life working, giving jobs to 3,000 people. The day of his birthday, this factory burns down. And so he was um, put through a test of darkness and the insurance company would be paying him a half a billion dollars. Imagine in those days, 1995, that was uh, today, it's even today, it's a crazy amount of money. But in those days was even like multiply it. So he had the choice to retire, you know, 70 year old guy, he, he has a choice, he could, he could have retired or he could have built that same factory in a different state that was cheaper land and cheaper labor. But he decided that he was not gonna retire and that he was not gonna move the factory to a different place. He decided that he, wa he, he, decided that he was gonna pay every employee, 3,000 employees, he was gonna pay them their wages until the factory would be rebuilt. This was in December. He not only paid them their wages every month, but he even gave them their December bonus. So he kept this, um, this factory, he rebuilt it, and he gave jobs to all these people. Nobody lost their jobs. They were paid every month until this factory was rebuilt. And so he was interviewed many, many, many times. And in one of these interviews, he was asked why why, why did you do that? Like, what compelled you to do that? Like, any of the other decisions were okay. Like, you're not going against anything, it's okay. You could have given a nice check to every employee until they find a job and, and that's it. And she said, because my father taught me that when there's a moral vacuum, do everything in your power to be a man. And, uh, and what he meant was that you have to be a light. You have to do a Kiddush Hashem. You have to do something that, that brings honor to God and that you're gonna reveal God in this world. So it says that when Mashiach comes, we will see how all this darkness was really, uh, that we thought it was so tragic and it was so horrible, but in reality, we're gonna see how it was really fundamentally good and that all the twists we are experiencing, we will be able to see how straight life is. Really, life is straight. And that our life, our, our life really is an opportunity to do a Kiddush Hashem, to bring light to the world. Every time you're put into a dilemma, a moral dilemma of doing right or wrong, whenever you do what's the right thing, even if you're gonna lose from it, even if it's not the, the thing that is in fashion, in reality, what you're doing is you're revealing God. And this month of Kislev and the holiday of Hanukkah reminds us that we're the light, that the world shines because of us, and that when humanity at large is not doing kind things and it's not taking care of each other and it's not doing things that really go against their nature and against their comfort zones, then the world would really be very dark and that the light that we have really comes from each one of us. So I want to wish you a happy Hanukkah. It should be a beautiful, beautiful holiday for you and your family and that the lights of Hanukkah, that when you look at them, really you bring them into you because it says that in the lights of Hanukkah, the light of Mashiach is contained. These candles that, that, that burn for an hour, half an hour, it's a, it's a alaha, that we should sit for half an hour and look at the lights and not do anything else. Because at the, at, when you're looking at these lights, which is the light of Mashiach, which is contained in these lights, you, internally you're gonna understand that you, your job in this world is to be a light. And these lights give you that strength. 
So I wish you a blessed week and remember, live a little higher. Thank you. Thank you.